The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory. Jesus returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to the Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings which we hear today are taken from all different parts of sacred scripture. Indeed, our first reading comes from the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy being one of the first five books of the Old Testament, that is the Torah. And so it is a reading that we, or rather a book, that we share with the Christians around the world, and certainly our Jewish brothers and sisters, the ancestor, our ancestors in faith. And then we have St. Paul writing to the Romans and in today's Gospel from that uh, fourth chapter of St. Luke. And so all of these different readings come from different parts of sacred scripture and yet they speak to a, they speak to a singular purpose. They speak to our relationship with God and indeed even more so how that relationship is tested as we walk in the very desert of our lives. We hear in today's first reading that Moses spoke to his people and he commanded, the priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. And then you shall declare before the Lord your God. And he continues with the whole story of the people who became a great nation in Egypt. And then they began to be mistreated and oppressed by those Egyptians who imposed hard labor upon us. And we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And as Moses continues, he says, Therefore I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me, because the Lord freed his people from that oppression and brought them out of that place of slavery to a, and, and, led, and is leading them on the way to that land of milk and honey. And they offer those first fruits of their labors, of their work in the soil, returning unto the Lord those very gifts which they had received from him from being set free from that slavery. Indeed, what we hear in today's first reading is precisely the same reasoning, if you will, for how we engage in our weekly tithe as the basket is passed forward 
we place some of the fruits of our labor, the first fruits of our work, the 10% that we offer, back to Almighty God, recognizing that it is by His gift that we have the labor we have and the work that we can do for His glory. And we bring that gift and we place it before the altar, signified in that bread and wine that then becomes the very sacrificial offering of the body and blood of Christ. And so we share in that very sacrifice because the Lord freed us from the slavery that we endured under the oppressive hands of the Egyptians. And mind you that this first reading is Moses speaking to his people. Moses, who led them out of Egypt, and, and, and as it were, through certain temptations and, and through certain um, misalignment of their relationship with Almighty God, they wandered in that very desert for 40 years on their way to the Promised Land. But Moses wouldn't make it into the land of Canaan. He wouldn't make it across the river. For he did not trust in the Lord. But already that hope is guiding them through the desert. And that same imagery is offered us in the gospel as well. That Christ Jesus, having been filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus who went to John the Baptist in the River Jordan, who was baptizing people who came out of the craziness and the, and the challenges of life in the city and the temptations that distracted them. And he was baptizing in the River Jordan when they would feel the cleansing of their very bodies. And Christ Jesus himself was baptized to show the very power of that sacrament. That it's not merely outer cleansing, but an interior one. And the Holy Spirit came down as a dove, resting upon him. And a voice was heard, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus was baptized so that we may be baptized and set free. And what happens right when he's baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit? He was led by that Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. And so too are we now at the very beginning of this journey through the desert that we see as Lent. Through the desert, recognizing that all the different trials and tribulations that seem to afflict us are, as it were, passing. And the devil, so too, as he tempts them, tempts, tempts, as the devil tempted Christ, so too does he aspire to tempt each one of us. To keep us enslaved to our wants, enslaved to the things of the earth, enslaved to the different passions that can control our very hearts and our will. And when we read these, when we read this sacred scripture, and we see how, again, turning back to that first reading, the people were oppressed, maltreated. Great tribulation befell them. And we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. And perhaps... You, like I, sometimes wonder, does God hear our cry? Perhaps you wonder, like I, how is it that there can be suffering, such suffering, in the world? And maybe we've even heard those, that very line, I can't believe in a God to be, ju ju to be so merciful and good when I see the suffering of the innocent, when I see the scandals of the church. And that can easily creep into our thoughts. And then we hear this scripture and we and hear how it seems that the Lord hears the cry of the people in the Old Testament, but it's not like he's responding to my plea. And what am I doing wrong? Why is it that the Lord doesn't hear my cry? 
Why is it that the Lord allows suffering? Because so it is. The Lord allows suffering. And so it forces the question, why? And it forces us to recognize in our own selves, why would there be? be a good and merciful God who would allow suffering. And if we entertain that thought, perhaps it can lead us deeper into the very mystery of who we are made in the image and likeness of God. Perhaps it can allow us to recognize that the evil of suffering permitted by God is precisely the price of our freedom. God has made us in His image and likeness. He has made us free. Free to exercise our will. Free to choose the good. And yes, even to choose the bad. And so if we were to think, for example, of a woman raped, she didn't deserve it. It didn't, it wasn't something that she had expected. And suddenly through that, from that very moment, her life is wounded because of the ill will of another forcing themselves upon her. And will we add sin against sin? As sometimes we've heard of the constraint and the false choice that abortion is in that circumstance because of the ill use of freedom that someone used and, and abused. Or think of someone, a young family, killed by a drunk driver or a child maimed in such an accident. And how could God allow such a thing happen? How could, allow, how could a good God allow someone to get drunk and then get behind the wheel? Because he allows our freedom. And so the challenge for each one of us is to recognize the very power of that freedom, the value of that freedom, and the power of our choices. And are we a society that allows our choices to carry the weight that they do, or do we constrict and corrupt and, 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 and twist? And hear the words of the evil one speaking unto us as he spoke unto Christ Jesus today in the Gospel. If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. He's trying to prey upon our hunger, trying to prey upon our weaknesses. Or how about this? The devil said to him, as he showed him all of the kingdoms of the world in a single instant, I shall give you, to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. Do you hear that? From the very father of lies, the great accuser, the devil himself has that power. Has that power. And does he does he not use it to tempt us? To show us all of the power of the world? And to corrupt us, to turn us away from, from the one whom we shall worship, and that is, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Are our hearts turned towards the power of the world and the imagery of false sense of, false idols of freedom, false idols of of power, false idols of peace, false idols of love? Or do we turn towards the Lord and confess Him with our lips and acclaim Him in our hearts? Here we are given this opportunity through this season of Lent to walk through that very desert and to make our way to the promised land to endure the different trials and tribulations of our life, and to engage in acts of fasting in this season of Lent, so that we may be more aware of the freedom that is ours, 
and to see the consummation of that freedom perfected in our union with God. Let us not abuse that freedom. Let us use it towards the good. And let us speak those very words of holiness, calling others to holiness, calling others to follow this very way. Who is Christ Jesus? The way, the truth, and the life. To follow this way through the desert of our lives to that very promised homeland of union with God. Let us recognize what we are all about during this season of Lent. To form our wills well and to be truly free. Amen.